a Yamaha T Dub Club TC Rad One here. It's Monday. I'm here at the Mountain View Motorcycle Campground, and this was a gym within a gym because I had no expectation as to what kind of campground this was. You, know, you look at the title, and you know I wasn't paying it a whole lot of attention because I just didn't know what what was going on. Uh, but on top of the fantastic weekend, we also, um, you know, now knowledgeable of this hidden gem of a campground up here in uh, North Carolina. And I will say if you're an adventure rider, dual sport rider, motorcycle rider, this, this might be a good place to put a little star on your Google Maps. Cause you never know when you're going to be coming through here and need a place to camp out like i'm tent camping but they have a bunkhouse they actually have an uh rv trailer you can rent out as well um and why do you want to stay here the the riding from this location is insane in every direction it's i i, I don't think there, there are no straight lines here. There are no flat bottoms here. It's just hills and turns and curves and twisties, and it's all the great things that a motorcyclist enjoys. And uh, this, this little campground sits right in the middle of all that. You want to go that way over the mountain? You want to go that way over the mountain? You want to go that way over the mountain? You want to go that way over the mountain? You go in any direction, and there's, like, just great riding. And, uh... I have to say, man, this is this is a place that that you know it's not trying to be big. It doesn't want to be big. It doesn't want to host your, you know, 500 party, you know, campfire rally stunt party or beer slide rolling down the hill party. This is a campground that's serious about adventure riding, and uh, and, and primarily their start was within the ADV rider community. And if you're familiar with that forum, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly encourage you to take a look at advrider.com and look at that community, even as a T-dubber, uh, because that forum is kind of where I originally heard about the T-dubs out cruising. And, and I saw this, they only have one thread on the, on the forum for the T-dub, <clears throat> but what was really cool about it was is it was showing these guys going on adventures on T-dubs and they were taking all the little back roads and little dirt roads and I'm like man that's what I want to do I want to find the most or actually the least traveled areas and the least known about areas and and go there and so that was a big proponent of me getting into the T-dub and it was a new challenge um to, and to explore. I've done all the big bike stuff. I've done dual sport stuff, but getting into a small displacement dual sport, um, it's kind of what led me here and this great community and this great campground. And this, uh, you know, I gave it the hashtag, the NC TW 200 rally because North Carolina, uh, you know, it got posted on the Facebook group page, the Yamaha TW200 World Facebook group and in the event section was this little TW200 rally and it was out of North Carolina and I'm like man I gotta come up here and check this out um, now that I'm out here living in Alabama from California so I popped up here and found this campground and this is well I didn't find it Rex and the boys found it and uh, but you know they shared with us you know the camaraderie of this community and and uh i'm super excited to uh to to know these guys now i will be back uh i'm pretty sure of that and we're already talking about tw 200 rally being hosted here uh next year like why not annual you know third weekend in october <laughs> like start planning and guess what you don't have to worry about accommodations because they're just gonna be here heck man ship your camping gear here you know or or reserve a bunk they don't have a lot of bunks this is not like a big big you know big thing 
uh, I, mean, I think there's like eight bunks or six bunks. We'll, we'll find out about that in a minute because I'm going to actually uh, talk with, you know, Mark and Janine about their facility here. Well, all right. So here I am, TC Rad 1 at the Mountain View Motorcycle Campground in North Carolina. We're at North Carolina? Elk Park. Elk Park. Mark and Janine. So we're going to get into this because guess what? This is my new favorite campground. All right. So tell me, what year did you guys choose to officially make this your guys' motorcycle campground? How long have you guys been doing this? County in reverse. <laughs> it's easier just to say this is our fifth season. Fifth season. Yes. Okay. And um, so what what led you to do this? I mean, obviously, you must have ridden motorcycles. and But, but what made you go from, like, here's my home and, and property, and here's my motorcycles, and how does, how does all the rest come together in the middle? What made you do that? Well, we like to tell people that it started by accident. Okay. And there's a little more to it than that. Oh, but, always. But um, I had camped off my bike for years and been into adventure bikes for, for quite a few years. And uh, I used to stay at Blue Ridge Motorcycle Campground pretty often. And it was just the coolest place. Beautiful property. I always loved the place, and I thought, you know, I'd like to do something like this. So, uh, I guess not long after we got married, I uh, I kind of <laughs> talked to you about that, and mm -hmm. and you thought it was a great idea, and we well, I was kinda... in complete agreement with it. It was a brilliant idea because we had the property, you know, and the roads and the riding here are incredible. So we crunched the numbers and figured out that it was just a totally foolish idea. <laughs> and, never live long enough to get it paid for. And, and uh, so we, every year I met some guys over at Blue Ridge at the same time that the BMW Georgia Mountain Rally was going on, which was always the first week, the first weekend of May. And so this particular year, five years ago now, I... In, in March, I called my buddy D and I said, uh, so what are the dates this year? And he goes, so there's a problem with that. He said, they've booked a vintage motorcycle group. There's gonna be 150 of them camping there and we're not gonna be there. And so I just blurt out like I do all the time, get myself in trouble. Before you called Janine, you, you yeah, blurted. Yeah, I just blurt this out. I'm on the phone with D and I said, well, why don't we just have it at our place? And he said, I'll run that by the guys and see, you know. He calls me the next day and he says, everybody's good with that. And I said, oh, crap. <laughs> and, and everybody's like a dozen guys coming from Michigan, Kansas, Florida, um, D.C. area. Yeah. So. So, so that's where it, that was the official spark and formation. Right. That was our first group. And uh, so... Here it is March, and first weekend of May, we're going to have basically a small rally here. And we bought a couple of penny tables. We went, to, uh, we touched base with a friend of ours that works at a trucking place, and he, uh, he had a truck rim laying around for us to turn into a fire pit. That and some stone from the rock slide down the hill here uh, that had blocked Scavenged. the road. And yeah, we scavenged a lot of stuff. We finished the shower that had just been roughed in, and I was, you know, I wasn't in any hurry to get that going before, but then I was in a hurry. <laughs> um, we were cut, we were out here in the snow cutting trees. Another friend bush hogged some stuff off, and you know, it all came together. All right. And that's how it started. So then, ever over the last five years, we've just kind of added this and that, and you know. Uh, you saw the the planters that are made out of old motorcycle helmets. We start out with that one yellow helmet hanging there that Janine planted some bright flowers in, and uh, most of the rest of them have since been donated by campers. You know, they they have their 
helmet garden donations that they bring when they come to stay with us, and it's really neat. But, uh, so this property here, this property is a, kind of a unique piece of property, and I noticed the, uh, the photo over there that you guys showed me. So give me a little bit of the history of the property itself here. Like what? I got the property um, in 2001. It belonged to a family friend of ours, and she passed away. And I got the property in 2001. Moved out here in 2004. Um, and at that time, the house on it was in total disrepair. So um, after having it evaluated by several different contractors, they said, no. <laughs> Time to, it's time to say goodbye. So there was a guest cottage on the property that was in pretty good shape. So I moved into the guest cottage and throughout the course of the next several years began cleaning up the property because it had been abandoned and neglected. So of course there's a lot of you know old buildings that need to be cleaned up, trash that people have dumped. So throughout the next few years I started cleaning it up and realized what a pretty piece of land it is. You know, And so then when Mark came on board and we were married in 2009, we rehabbed the garage, we rehabbed the house, and uh, added a solar shed, and, you know, have, you know, tried to make the property work for us rather than us work for the property. But um, it was beautiful as an orchard. I am sad that it was neglected and abandoned for so many years and couldn't be restored, at least in part, as an orchard. But, it, it originally was an apple vineyard, right? Yes. Is it the original property was a little over 30 acres, and the gentleman and his wife that started it um, came here in 1949 from the Memphis area, and he was nationally acclaimed um, for his apples. He is, was apparently an excellent um, craftsman, so he was very well known and very well respected. And she was an attorney that um, had decided to not practice and go into the mission field. So she was away most of the time, and he passed away first, and of course she was here alone and had a caretaker that took care of the property while she was away, and then of course they both passed and the property became available. Are there st still any original apple trees here from, from, it was... There are some renegade trees. Renegade that, trees. That the birds have uh, oh, they use seeded, seeded back. Um, but by the time I got the property, the trees were all either aged out or diseased or damaged. You know, right. Weren't able to be salvaged. So uh, we did a lot of cleanup on the property, and now most of the property um, is in hayfield right. where the trees were. And so for the now that it's a motorcycle campground, and we're the third week in October here, it was chilly. Uh, how do how do how do local like will you camp here or will the campers will will they be camping here year round? Uh, it's kind of sparse from from like the end of this month till April. Right. Uh, we'll have we don't really close because we live on the property right. and if, you know if some way where motorcyclist comes in and wants to camp, you know. Yeah, you'll be open then. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know. If it's snowing down there and he needs a place to get out, he he could stop in here. Yeah, Absolutely. there's there's heat in the bathroom. Yeah. Um I work in the shop here. Yeah. Uh year round, so I keep it tolerable. So what are what are summertime heats like here? Uh mid 80s is hot for us. And that's here. rarely. Cuz we're we're above 3000 feet. And uh, elevation is a great moderator. Yes. You know, so um, we all summer this year, we we regularly had temps in the fifties at night. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, not every night, but the the warmest it usually is at night is you know like maybe seventy degrees. Nice. Um, and you know. It's also kind of rare that it's still. I'm just looking around because it's it's a little bit still right now. But usually we have a breeze, right? Right. Which, as you noticed around the campfire the other night, it was a yeah cool breeze. Yes. You know, so 
But that's um, nice in July. That yeah. can be, you know, it can work with you or against you, but right. usually it's nice to have a little bit of a breeze. So why would a motorcyclist want to motorcycle in this, like, region or area that, like, what, it, kind of describe to people where we are. Like, where are we? Like, I know we're specifically in Elk, Elk, Elk Creek, Elk Park. Elk Park. Elk Park. So where is Elk Park? It is in Avery County. Okay. Um, which gets the most precipitation of any county in North Carolina. And a, a lot of that is uh, winter precipitation. So a lot of that is snow. We have, uh, we have several ski resorts nearby and that kind of gives an idea of what kind of terrain we have. Uh, but we have, a, you know, a, I'm not the most well-traveled person ever, but um, I've been fortunate enough to ride a lot of places in this country and some in Europe. And I'm going to hold you right there because the other day around the campfire, I was listening to some of the spots you've ticked off in California. And just right. so for the viewers that are watching this, because we, we share a lot of those riding areas, kind of, kind of give me like what you've ridden here in the U S. Well, I, I, I spent like three months in, in, uh, central California and I was in between, jobs and I was kind of taking a break and deciding where to go next. That's right before I went back to school and uh, midlife crisis, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, so I spent three months just blitzing around back roads. There's a, uh, there's a uh, site called Passionate in California that, uh, when I started researching, knew that I was going to be spend a few months out there. Um, they had like a top ten list, ten best roads in California, you know, and uh, so I wrote all that down, and that was my uh, bucket list for California. So uh, we were uh, situated in Bakersfield for a few months. So it was a, um, Bakersfield's not that exciting of a place, no. but it's a very good central location for hitting everything from, you know, there out to like Death Valley, up to San Francisco, all the, you know, that area, uh, the Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1, uh, uh, let's see. Angeles Crest Highway, yeah. um, Mulholland, you know, yeah, Mulholland, <laughs> uh, and a lot of the, uh, what is it, Topanga Canyon, yeah. uh, Rock Store. Is that what's yeah. down there? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've done it all. Yeah, and uh, up in there's some awesome riding up in uh, Sequoia National Forest, uh, and like up. Coming up from, was it, is it 395? Yes. Um, One of my favorite roads. Nine Mile Canyon. Yep, yep. Uh, up past Kennedy Meadows. Yeah. Uh, the first time I went up there, it just blew me away. Uh, I was riding a BMW R1100 RT, and I was hustling the thing around. It's just what I had at the time, and I'd done a little suspension work to it. But I was riding it like a sport bike. The thing wore me out. But uh, I uh, I got off a big touring bike after that after that stint in California. Um, but, uh, what about Colorado or Washington? I've uh, ridden the Colorado BDR. Okay. And done. I haven't been to Washington yet. Um, I've done. Several trips to take me through Colorado, so I've ridden off road and on road in Colorado, um, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. Um, 
the the mountains and all those places are great. Okay, so there's there's the base, which a lot of people will agree is some of the greatest riding. But after this weekend, I'm going to have to beg to differ a little bit. So kind of tell people what's so special about this little valley of mountains here. Like, like why, why here? Why come ride here? Well, I guess one, one great comparison would be Utah. Utah is amazing. Probably one of the best nights of camping in my life was in Utah, up at Muley Point. Um, up the mountain from uh, Valley of the Gods. Um, but out there, you know, we searched out the twisties and we did some off-road stuff on the big bikes, but we were hitting all the different best twisties we could find and exploring and stuff. So you'd ride for a couple of hours and then you'd hit some twisties. And then you'd ride, you know, straight roads for a couple of hours. And, hit some twisties. Here, you just hit the twisties. <laughs> you you just throw the fr throw the straight roads out the window and and the flat ground. I will add yes. that. Um, so from right here, you can turn out of the driveway and immediately be on twisty roads, and you can string together a ride where you're on twisties all day. You don't hit any major highways at all uh you could do almost the same thing with dirt like for dual sport and adventure riding um you can be on dirt roads within uh three or four miles of the driveway and go play around on that kind of stuff for half a day uh, pop out ride a little bit of pavement go to another area and just spend another several hours hitting, uh, you know, four service roads, dirt roads, and, um, and pretty much that's available in every direction you go in. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the named roads, which don't call out to me as much as some of the lesser known things, because where we typically ride around here, there's... It's not it's not clogged up with traffic and you know you don't you don't have a lot of the craziness that you have at places like Deals Gap, A.K.A. the Dragon. Right. Um, it you know a lot of people may not go along with this, but in my experience, once once a road like that gets a name hung on it, it changes it. Uh, people flop to it, people start crashing, the speed limits come down, the fun comes down. Um, you know, so it, it's a very, it, it's a very unique area in that it's like a, uh, almost like a secret, uh, kind of a raw experience versus the polished and presented, handed to you kind of thing. I.e. notice we're not handing out any names of roads <laughs> or we're not sending out any GPS coordinates. You just kind of got to come and sweet talk these guys into showing you around. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's how we're going to keep it that way. So with that, ADV Rider is kind of the grand central of all this. Talk to me about... Talk to me about the relationship between us and ADV Rider as a community. Well, I've been um, I've been a member on Adventure Rider Forum for quite a few years, and I'm not a well-known member because I don't go on there and spend most of my time on there. Kind of too busy, but um, I really enjoy the forum. It's it's uh, it's a great community. Uh, I have bought and sold a lot of things on there, and it's one of those deals where um, most, you know, all the members on there that I've dealt with, you you can feel pretty comfortable uh, paying them for an item and trusting that they're going to put it in the mail and ship it to you, and it's going to arrive, and it's going to look just like the pictures, and it's going to be how they described it, and 
uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty tight knit uh, group. And uh, so when we first started this, it was the most familiar place for me to get our name out there. So I started a uh, thread on the vendor section about the campground. And it's not super active, but it's there. And uh, between that and, uh, and, and a lot of people have learned about us there. You know, some people have learned about us by just uh, coming to the area, doing a, a Google search. And if you're anywhere in the region, we kind of come up at the top of the list if you look for a motorcycle campground. And then, you know, we've got a Facebook page. And then I got my own page for my little side stuff that I do, some training and working on bikes and, and uh, kind of being a tour guide kind <laughs> of thing. Um, and that... Uh, you know, it's another little side thing, and uh, it all comes with yeah, owning a it, campground that caters to motorcycles. As a friend of <laughs> our, as a friend of ours says, things like that that just kind of accumulate and go together. He says it pollinates. Yeah, it just kind of uh, all falls into place. We've been really blessed. We've been really blessed. <laughs> and Janine, your your past like. Have have you been a motorcyclist in the past prior to meeting I Mark? I was not. I was in the horse industry. Okay, so close enough. I've I've gone broke in the horse business twice. So <laughs> <laughs> you try it with quarter horses and you don't make any money, then you go to Appaloosas and you lose even more. So, but um, just like motorcycling, you meet the nicest people. I have lifetime friends that I've met through the horse industry that. Um, you know, we're still very treasured and we're still very close, even though I'm out of the <laughs> loop now. Right. But, yeah. but now you have new horse friends. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a different kind of horse. Yeah. But, um, it's, um, it's really enjoyable. And we like the, the size and the fellowship that we are because we can do things like we did the other night. You know, the, the, gather with the group around the campfire, you know, share pizza together. And if we were a larger venue... I don't know that we would have that right. option available to us. So, you know, we're, we're very blessed and very comfortable with the friends and the family that we have. And uh, the, the smallness of it. Because mm -hmm. anything too big becomes crazy manageable. Well, and we want it to be more family um, without bringing in employees and other, all the circus and all the drama. Right. You know, with a, a big facility. So uh, we like the intimacy. And, the, and we want to keep it that way. Right. And, the, <laughs> you know, and the fellowship that we share yeah. with the campers right now means everything to us. Because this is our social life. Right. What, what we do with our campers is our social life. Nice. So, mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. We, we love that. Yeah. We, we don't need to go elsewhere to seek out entertainment because... It comes to you. Well, yeah, we like learning the folks that are coming to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of them are pretty entertaining. They are very entertaining. <laughs> We've had some great personalities. And this weekend has been a total joy. And these dogs that you have are pretty entertaining as well. You guys can't see them, but they're laying on the ground here. And the one guy, he's probably rolling around, but he puts on a good show. But yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, great thing you guys have here. It's been an it's been awesome, awesome weekend. Um, so with that, how, how do people find you guys? You know, like, I guess you said like Google, you can find you on Google, ADV rider. Yep. Uh, you have a Facebook page. What's the name of the Facebook page? Mountain View Motorcycle Campground. All right. It's just straightforward it's simple. and simple. It's just that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, come here for the mountain views, right? I believe, yeah. And I believe on, um, uh, on Adventure Rider, our GPS coordinates, Oh, are on there <clears throat> All right. on I'll... the thread, and is that on Facebook also or no? Uh, I believe it is. You probably have actual is. location on mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I guess it pins us on the map. Walk, yeah, yeah. Walk you uh, right in. But you know we're uh, we're about a third of a mile off the main road, so it's. Uh, let's do, let's do this. Okay, so off off the main road, which is 
quite easy to get to, but what, what would a motorcycle, what are the amenities here that you guys offer for, you know, travelers? Like, what do you offer here? Well, we have... A uh, campground. Yeah, we have uh, tent sites, and we have, uh, we have four hammock stands. Oh, okay. Um, Plus a few trees. Well, there's actually two hammock stands that are two-place hammock racks. So four hammocks can hang yes, down four there. Hammock, a space for four hammocks. Plus a few trees for, you know, stringing up a hammock. And that's in the lower section of the campground. We have an upper section that's kind of, it's just kind of a, a more of a primitive right. uh, setup for adventure and dual sport guys because the old tractor road going up there is a little rough. Um, of course, those those guys, anyone that camps up there has the uh, use of the facilities down here, you know, the bathroom, shower, and all that stuff. Um, you have these bunks. Yep, there's five bunks and uh, a little bunk room here that we just built last spring. And all and, of your linens, towels, blankets are provided with right. those, so you don't need to bring anything. You guys have the refrigerators here. Right, we've got fridges and... Uh, Most important, uh, there's a coffee, coffee maker. maker and coffee. <laughs> uh, we've got a charcoal grill sitting there that's, you know, for camper use. Um, several fire pits. Uh, just all kinds of, you know, uh, utensils, plates, uh, anything that somebody might forget, right. you know. We've got uh, condiments in the fridge that are just kind of donated and shared. And, um, of course, we got the, the vintage Avion. Okay. And it's, uh, it's set up kind of geared towards couples. It's got a queen bedroom, and we've got a couple of air beds that we can put in there. It's close quarters if both of them are in there, but that way a few guys could share the place. Right. Um, probably a little more comfortable, you know, for if there's only one bed in there because then we don't have to take out the table and stuff like that to rearrange. But, uh, yeah, the, the vintage, vintage Avion is... Uh, Pretty much glamping for someone that doesn't want to sleep on the ground. Yeah, fully self-contained. It's on bathroom, tub and shower, four burner range, uh, microwave, basically everything you need. And, and, and you're a bit of a kind of a motorcycle service rescue. Like, yeah, like if, yeah. if they're having issues, right. you, can, you can help guys out here as well. Yeah, I, I used to work as a, a BMW tech, worked at several different BMW shops over the years, and uh, worked as a Honda tech in, in some multi-line shops. And and you're becoming a bit of a KTM tech as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I do a bit of KTM work, and, uh, you know, I've got, it, it kind of, that kind of, another thing that kind of pollinated, as they say, um, I ride a, a an old KTM dual sport. Um, would be kind of a beater bike for most people that have to have the newest, latest, greatest technology. Um, but it's like an anvil, you know, old reliable, um, and it gets me where I want to go. And um, but from that, you know, I do a lot of work on friends' bikes, and then friends of friends, and so. Yeah, I've ended up doing a lot of work on newer KTM stuff, uh, doing some tuning on 690s, Motard bikes and stuff like that. And You have a 1290 Adventure coming in for a valve job yeah, in a, yeah. when you get some time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for uh, valve adjustment. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting uh, set up to work on newer BMWs, um, with the shim type valves and stuff. And uh, I'm kind of stepping into the 21st century and, uh, you know, stocking shims, uh, shim kits for those bikes. And uh, they're not, there's no huge mystery there. They're not, I haven't worked on anything yet, modern wise, that's any, that 
that's nearly as tough as like an old Honda CBX six cylinder or, uh, you know, early nineties, uh, uh, VFR, uh, valve adjustment where you gotta, you know, move the radiators and pull half the bike apart to get in there. And, uh, you know, the, the modern stuff is, uh, it's just more of the same, right? A few little, you know, tweaks here and there. It's, it's, it's all basically the same. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's. So once the motorcycles have left and you guys get everything cleaned up and ready for the next thing, what, what do you guys like to do in your non moto camping facility, you know, life? Do you guys ever get to breathe and just like, kick your feet up and or or do you guys have other interests <laughs> um, that's we do that some in the winter some during the off season we'll get to uh, um, decompress a little bit but but we get lonely you know this year when we weren't able to open for a couple of months um, of course for obvious reasons um, even the dogs were so pitiful you know they love campers they love the whole campground experience and we would come down here you know to do whatever we were doing, you know, some maintenance or Mark would be working down here. And um, I had some gardening chores, you know, that I was trying to tend to. And I'd come down and the dogs would be lined up on the edge of the driveway down there, just waiting, hoping, you know, someone was coming, you know. And so then at dark every day we'd have to bring leashes and drag them home and say, nobody's coming today. So, um, but uh, like us, they really enjoy the campground. So during the off season, we miss the people. And we're not, you know, we're not that young anymore, so the occasional nap is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Those are important. Yeah. Um, that doesn't happen much during the season, but in the winter, yeah, it's nice to have the stove fired up and, you know, uh, you sit in the recliner for a minute looking at the, uh, the fire dancing around and all of a sudden, boom, you're gone. You're, gone. <laughs> you're in the, I call it the deep battery recycle mode. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good. I like that. Not yeah, so, so naps. So you enjoy those. Naps happen. And, you know, living here is is uh, uh, just, I guess, typical country life, you know. Um, in the off season when you've got snow and you've got storms and you've got ice and you know, you have a lot of nice days, and then you have a lot of really nasty weather, you know, in between. So you keep up with that kind of stuff, and you know when you know when it's going to be bad. You go out and you stock up on stuff because at any time you might you might be stuck here for a week or two, and if you're prepared, it's no big deal, right. you know. So we try to we try to stay on top of things and. And then, of course, there's always projects going on. So, you know, looking looking ahead to get ready for the next year. And we just, like, right now we're just finishing up a project at the house where we're uh, we're doing a guest room that's kind of like an Airbnb thing. And it's available to campers. And uh, Oh, shoot, that, that's going to be a new add-on. Yeah, 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 <laughs> because we... Campground. Yeah, we needed something kind of in between things right. um so like over and above the bunk room uh where you share the room with other people and share the bathroom and all that the guest room has private entrance um two twin beds uh its own bathroom and a covered place to park motorcycles so uh, you can roll in with your toothbrush, and uh, the only thing, it's almost ready. I mean, the only thing we have left to do is put in a fridge and a coffee maker and a couple of little odds and ends, and it'll be definitely full up and running in the spring. Nice. So. Uh, it has a really pretty view. There's a covered porch at the entrance and that you can sit at a little bistro table and look out on the mountain. So it's going to well, be a I haven't, view. I haven't been up there, but I did go up to the top of the hill, and if there's any glimmer of that view, it's the same. this place has a 360-degree view of, like, just awesomeness in every direction. Thank you. Thank you. So. 
We never get tired of it. I have, <laughs> this is the fifth place I've lived, and fortunately, I've always been able to wake up and see that mountain. You know, it's just oh wow, it's incredible. That's a beautiful mountain thank too. You. Well, hey, thank you guys. Uh, Thank you guys massively for doing this. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being a part of it. This was a fabulous weekend. No, I'm saying thank you guys for making this, uh, I don't know. Having what, this here. Yeah, this little habitat of uh, motorcycle culture. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And the phone rings, guys. Yep. <laughs>